Today's episode is brought to you by ETB Games. ETB Games is, of course, our locals in Alexandria, Louisiana. They are our one-stop shop for all of our card game needs. They have singles and sealed product for the games that you love, like Yu-Gi-Oh!, Magic the Gathering, and Pokemon. Of course, you can also find the accessories that you need, such as sleeves, binders, playmats, and more. And if you're into D&D, well, they have all of your D&D figurines, the paint for the figurines, dice, books, and anything that you would need to play. So be sure to check out ETB Games. There's a link in the description down below. And now back to today's episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome into today's episode of the Top Cut Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast. My name is Sunny. I am your host. I'm here with my co-host, Caleb. Hello. And of course, before we get too far in, we want to thank all of our wonderful sponsors. So a huge thank you, of course, to ETB Games in Alexandria, Louisiana. Of course, we also want to thank Steel Fox Games up in Shreveport for (sighs) their sponsor of the podcast. And of course, we want to thank Gem Accessories and Millennium Threads. You can find links links to all of those sponsors, and you'll find discount codes to Gem and Millennium down below. Now, also, we want to, of course, if you haven't already, please check out our Dragon Shield and TCG Player affiliate links. Just click them before you shop to support the channel at no extra cost to yourself. And of course, be sure to check out our Discord server. It is a wonderful place to go for deck building advice and help. It is a wonderful place to go to talk about general things about the game, or we have off-topic channels for video games and everything else. So with that said, let's go ahead. Oh, and thank you to our patrons, of course. Can't forget them. But we'll (laughs) do a whole big thing at the end. But until then, let's go ahead. We'll get into some announcements. And then after that announcements, we will do some new cards and then some format discussion if we have time. Heck yeah. You okay? Yeah. You good, Caleb? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. You, you seem, seem a little tired. I mean, yeah, it's late and... It's always late. Yes. And it doesn't help. Well, wait, no, it should be easier. It's only it's only like nine something instead of ten something. And like, you know, normal people, normal time. Because of the time change. Yes. So it's earlier. No, dude. I'm all thrown out of whack. Really? Yeah. Oh. I didn't get thrown out of whack at all. Is the time change really that bad for for most people? Not for, uh, Depends on which one. Uh, normally the spring back one, I think. The one where you get an extra hour. Spring forward, fall back. Yeah. The one where you get an extra hour. Fall. Usually isn't as bad. For some people, but for a couple people, it's it's just they're the same, equally bad. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, I don't know. I never really let them bother me too much because it usually happens on a Saturday night, and so I look down and like, oh, it was one, it was like one fifty-five, and now it's like three a.m. Oh wow, that hour went by quick, and I just go to bed. I just wake up whenever I want on a Sunday because I don't do anything on Sundays. Must be nice. It's great. Because, like, the wife and the kiddo go off to church and stuff, and I, I stay at home, and I can just sleep till whenever I want. It's the one day a week that I can just, like, relax and do nothing. The one day. Must be nice. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Speaking of things that are very nice, we will be at the Houston Regional, uh, hosted by, I think, Houston Game Guys, I think is the name of the uh, OTS that's running the event. Uh, so the Houston Regional will be held. I think it's at four 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 Mall Drive. Uh-huh. You're the one with this information, not me. Well, yeah, I know, but <laughs> I want to. I want to give accurate information. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, definitely. This upcoming event that we're telling everybody that we're going to be at and that they should definitely check out. Oh, definitely. Oh my goodness. Uh, this is 318. Okay, Game Guys at 444 Almeda Mall Drive in Houston, Texas. There's a 600 person cap. And from what I understand, they will have gaming chairs for all 600 players. Ooh, nice. And so Caleb and I will both be there. Caleb is playing the main event. Yeah. I am not. I am actually going to be commentating the event with House of Champs. Heck yeah. 
I'm super excited about it. This is my first time doing real commentary on an event. Um, I did a little bit of like a a stream for the one of the YCSs, but I only lasted like two rounds before I was like, I'm tired. I want to stop. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, keeping that persona up on a stream is, dude, it's so much harder than you would think, you know? Um, just the amount of time that people go live for sometimes blows my mind. I mean, it's a lot easier if you're not putting on a persona and it's just you. Yeah, for sure. But to keep yourself engaging and keep yeah, yourself yeah, yeah. entertaining and keep yourself engaged, right? Not, yeah, not just engaging, but also engaged yeah. in the content to keep your, you know, it's going to take a lot for me who, who I've trained myself over the years to be able to stand at a table and watch a game and be completely silent because it's not my game and I yeah. don't want to interfere in a tournament game to go from that to sitting, you know, further back watching it on camera yeah. and actually talking about it and commentating the whole thing. It's going to be very, very different experience. So I'm really hoping to be able to do that justice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to channel my inner DB grinder. Yeah and do do the game guys regional do it justice so and luckily i'll have an experienced streamer there with me i'll have house of champs yeah I'll have john with me so but yeah uh march 18th 10 a.m at the i'll meet a mall in houston there will be a huge regional and we will be there so if you are planning on going be sure to reach out and try to come say hey and come see us mm -hmm. so with that said, let's go ahead and get on into some new cards. Heck yeah. So I want to do the Evolves first. What do you say? Sure. All right. So first card we have is Evoltile Forest. This is a level two fire reptile effect monster. This is uh, attack 900, defense 300. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can special summon one Evoltile monster from your hand or graveyard in face down defense position. Two, during your main phase, you can set one Evo Force or Evo Instant directly from your deck. Three, if a monster or monsters you control will be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can tribute one reptile or dinosaur monster instead. Um, This is indeed an Evol monster instead of like what we would consider like a dinosaur card. I mean, I understand it's not an actual dinosaur card. It's yeah, an evolves. But, but I mean, it's part of the evolve archetype. Actually, I think we should kind of really quick kind of explain what their shtick is. Sure. So the evolves whole shtick was he had the evolve tile, the evolve source, and the evolve czars. Right. Uh, it was reptiles would then would upgrade themselves into dinos who would then upgrade themselves into dragons. Yes. Specifically, at the originally it was Lagia, Dolka, Solda. Mm-hmm. And those then, were the dragons, yeah. Yeah, which are the czars. Uh, so yeah, that, that was their whole shtick. So yeah, this was originally was it originally a hidden arsenal archetype, or am I thinking Jurax? You're, I think you're thinking of Jurax. No. Yeah, I think it is Jurax. Yeah. No, I think they were part of the. No, I think they were dual term. No, it was Jurax. It was Jurax. Okay. Okay. But like, because like the two archetypes kind of mesh so well together. Yeah, there they are some Jurax, like Jurak Alio and things like that, that just kind of... Jurak Gwaiba, I remember, was a big one. Because Gwaiba, you would use Gwaibas to go into a Lagia or a Dolka. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it was one of those things. Uh, Next card we have is Evolsor Rios, level 4 fire dinosaur effect monster, 1600 attack, 400 defense. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, if this card is normal or special summon, you can set an evolutionary bridge or evo singularity directly from your deck. Two, if you control this card that was special summoned by a fire monster effect or normal summoned, the only way you're really going to summon this thing, hilariously, um, you can send a fire reptile or dinosaur monster from your deck to your graveyard, then you can make the type and level of two face up monsters on the field become the sent monsters. Oh, wow. That's really good. Yeah, so like, yeah, so like, as long as you have, um, just any, literally him and another monster send something of the same level and type as him, which is a dino, boom, you have Lagia, Dolka. Yeah. Or, or even, uh, a Solda. So, yeah, 
or the one that we're about to talk about. Yeah. So there's a note here. Normally you're big on the names, but I like dinosaurs. So I like the oh, notes on enough. dinosaur names. Uh, the first one, which was Evoltile Forest. This card is named after Falia Dosaurus, which was a prehistoric crocodile. Oh, they're, oh, they're both crocodiles. Yes. They're both They're different crocodiles. kinds of crocodiles though. Yes. Because a, uh, Falodosaurus was more of like a land crocodile, whereas uh, the Evolsar, Evolsar Rios, this card is named after a species of Nothosaur, which is a group of cro crocodilian Pleosaur marine reptiles, specifically Lariosaurus. So cool. uh, a Pleosaur is the thing that you saw in the... Uh, not the newest Jurassic Park movie, but the first of the Chris Pratt ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's literally just imagine a Brachiosaurus, but in the water, but with fins. Yes, yes. Or well, like turtle flippers. So it was actually, it's very similar to Danger Nessie. It's actually very similar to that, and actually, a lot of people think that 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 the Pleosaur was the original inspiration for Nessie. Yeah, the Lotness monster specifically. Well, yeah. I just imagine like a brachiosaur, like in a like standing up in a swimming pool with like little arm floaties, just <laughs> oh, I'm drowning, <laughs> and like the water comes out to its ankles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, a big notable difference is that pleosaurs are not herbivores, and brachiosaurs yes. were herbivores. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> so next we have Evolzar Raz. Raz. I think, yeah, I think it'd just be Raz. Yeah. Fire Dragon Exceeds Effect Monster Rank 6, 2500 Attack, 1500 Defense, 2 Level 6 Monsters. Your opponent cannot target this card with material with monster effects. 2. When your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, you can detach 2 materials from this card. Then target 1 face-up card your opponent controls. Negate its effects until the end of this turn. If all materials attached to this card are reptile and or dinosaurs, you can activate this effect by detaching 1 material instead of 2. So this card might be named after, I'm going to try this, Ranzandrongobe. Ranzandrongobe? A large... Ranzandrongobe. Yeah, Ranzandrongobe. A large crocodile. Or Ororazdarko, a type of uh, pterosaur. My heart says Razan, my head says Darko. Yeah. So... So, so this is very cool. It's literally hot red dragon archery in abyss, but twice potentially. That's the coolest part about this card to me is that it's actually a generic rank six. Yeah, but, but it gives you a little little bonus if yeah. you do it with if reptiles or dinosaurs. Reptiles and or dinosaurs. Yeah, it's is. I I really like that little quirk in the design. I, I really like I really like uh, generic XCs that are like archetypal specific mm -hmm. but then if you just so happen to be in archetype not just exceeds they, they have some synchro monsters that are like this yeah, too. Yeah, yeah yeah where you get a bunch of extra bonus effects right so i think that a great example of this i think and i could be wrong here i have sometimes i have trouble remembering because i would never make it with anything but a worm but i think baxia is actually generic Oh. But it's very hard to use its effect unless you're just so happen to be in a worm deck. Right. Huh. I could be wait, let me let me double let me let me fact check myself. Fact checking live. Yeah. Be, oh whoa, that is the wrong Baxia. I don't know what that Ruh -ruh. is. Anyway. No, it's not it's not generic. Okay. Is it Yazi that's generic? May yeah, maybe. Oh, <laughs> Google Translate, like, we don't know what you're trying okay, to do. Okay, so Yazi is generic. Okay, yeah, yeah. But it's most effective in a worm deck because you can special summon a worm monster from your deck in defense position after it resolves. Yeah. So, cool. Anyway, the point is, I see what you say. I agree and think it is very cool when they make something generic, but then it, it gives it a more a wider range of applications. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Particularly in this situation where it's not like. Uh, archetypal specific yes where it's just typal specific or uh yeah typal uh specific i believe uh magic the gathering players would say it's tribal specific instead of archetypal yes that that's very yeah yeah, yeah. um so 
even so like even if the dinosaur players just happen to accidentally put two level six dinos on board they can get a double hot red dragon archfiend abyss yeah i would say that which i think is near impossible even with the new transcend drake stuff now isn't it Wait, oh, two, two sixes? Yeah, getting two level six dinos on board is near impossible. Oh, yeah, it's it's so difficult. It's crazy. Even after Transcend Drakes. I really do believe that this card fills such an interesting hole in the card pool because we've ne we have never had a truly very good rank six monster. There have been tons of rank sixes over the years that have had niche applications and yeah. niche uses here and there. And like, and you in, would play them. And like in their niche, they were good. Right. But they've, there's never been just a good generic rank six. Rank six has never been just a toolboxy rank. Yeah. Um, like the only rank six that I can think of off the top of my head that was actively utilized was Atum. So Force Focus. Right. I forgot about Force Focus. I even made him. Yes. In Hieratics. And uh, there was another six. Volcus, uh, Volcasaurus and Freezer Dawn were both Five. rank fives. Yes. Blade Armor Ninja was rank five. No, Blade Armor Ninja was four. Crimson Shadow. Crimson Shadow Ninja was five. Right. Correct. Yeah. I, I don't... I can't, but see, this is exactly what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, the rank sixes are good, but not great. Yeah, th this perfectly exemplifies. tells you, exemplifies everything. So there's only a grand total of four by five, 20. Yeah. Well, there's Sol, if also are sold up. There's 36 total yeah. rank sixes in all of Yu Gi Oh! Yeah. Beatrice is probably the best ever. But you can all. But you don't necessarily have to make. You don't necessarily have to hard maker is the thing. But she's actually better if you do, which is weird. Uh, yeah, I would say that Beatrice has always been like the best rank six. Infinity is very good, but you're never gonna make hard make it. No, you're just gonna you're gonna slap them on top of Nova. Right. Uh, Constellar Ptolemy M7 is good, but she this card's just better. Yeah. Uh, it's very uh well. Uh, Ptolemy is very uh Exa Beetle very some it rarely but sometimes did come up. Yeah, again, it's it's they're all very like specific. Have like very, very specific niche uses. Yes. And I'm not saying that you know every single one of these cards is just terrible because it's not. You strike bouncer. That's the one I was trying to think of. That's it. Yeah. Very good card. Like yes. like these are good cards, but the issue is that they're not great. And it's like I would rather just I would rather have this guy. Yeah, exactly. I would much rather just make oh, this dude. Oh, Wallow is also the newest addition to the level, level six to the rank six pool. Oh, right. Have you ever have you heard of Wallow? Yeah, it's the it's the dude. It's like the centaur dude with like the big dead. It looks like death. He's got like the scythe. Who well, you're. Like, it's hell. It's easy to say all that when you're staring at the card art. I literally can't see the card art from the center. I could see you looking. Well, yeah, because I can see this, but I couldn't tell you what any of those cards are from this angle. I can see the cards. Okay. Well. Anyway. But yeah. Yeah. He's like the. Uh. It looks like a bl a bloodborne. Uh. Or a, yeah. Like a dark soul slash bloodborne slash yes, Elden Ring he boss. He really does. So Wallow is a newer card. It is from I believe Darkwing Blast. As it was super. Mm -hmm. Monsters you control gain 100 attack and defense for every card in your opponent's graveyard. Oh. Ooh. Quick effect. You target a card in your opponent's graveyard. Detach one or two materials and then run the appropriate effect. So if you detach one, you DD Crow or no, you know you uh, return that card to the deck. Okay, okay. And if you detach two, if it's a monster, you special summon it face up or face down defense position to your field. And if it's not a monster, you just set it to your field. So you steal it. Yes. Oh, that's cool. So that's you can detach cool. one, yeah. And it is, it is once per turn, but it's just a very cool quick effect interruption. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That said, I still think that this card fills a very cool and specific niche hole in the well, card pool. Well, yeah, because that would be an interrupt in the graveyard situation. Yeah. Uh, the other one is a uh, is just negate. It's an omni negate, and I think that that's better it's than a, photon strike bouncer, which is a monster negate specifically. Well, it not only is it a it's a negate, but it's a target negate, which is both better and worse. Well, photon strike bouncer, the it has to be on your opponent's field. But it doesn't target, does it? 
Uh, no, I don't believe it does. I yeah. already exited out of the tab. Yeah, yeah no, no, that's that's fine. Yeah, well, if it does, like if it doesn't target, if it does does not target, it is both. That would make the new the za both better and worse. Yes. Better because it can negate anything. Worse because it has to target it. Yeah. So uh, moving on to some other new cards, we have some new Numeralia cards. Whoop whoop. Yeah, it's that like that. It's like that one. It's the pendulum deck that doesn't pendulum summon. Yeah, that one. It's hilarious. Uh, so first card we have Numeral Numeralia Realizer, the Dream Materializer, Sleeping Princess. Level ten Light Fairy Effect Monster without an E. Th there's a typo in monster. Yeah, without an e. monster. Monster. Uh, fifteen hundred attack, three thousand defense. You only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, if this card is in your hand, you can target a monster you control, place it on the bottom of the deck, and if you do, special summon this card. Pretty good. Two, mm -hmm. if you if this card is special summon, activate one of these effects. Add Dreaming Numeralia from your deck to your extra deck face up. So just put it on the extra deck. Cool. Or change one other face up monster on the field face down to face position. Okay. This card gain and then three it gains hunter attack for each face down card in your extra deck. So if I'm not mistaken, the whole shtick with this was that she's sleeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your extra deck is her bed. Okay. And as long as she's there, all of the cards function as like they're her dreams or something. Uh, yeah, they're like. They're her dreams, but she's dreaming of guardians to protect her dreams. Okay. 10 4. It's weird. So, uh, next we have Numerilia's Dream Eater, Reveal. Uh, I think it's like Reveal. But Re it's Re Re Reveal. Reveal. It's French from Alarm Clock or Wake Up. Is it? If you look at the notes on the bottom. Oh. Duh. <laughs> Uh, level 10, Dark Beast Effect Monster, 2,500 attack, 2,500 defense. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can banish three cards from your extra deck face down except Dreaming Numeralia. Special summon this card. You cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck the turn you activate this effect except Pendulum Monsters. You can send one other level... 10 beast monster from your hand or face up field to the graveyard set one numerilia trap directly from your deck i remember the numerilia traps being solid but not like oh right, look here's a new one uh numerilia low i think last time when we got cards there was only uh four yeah, it, cards yeah it was like dreaming numerilia uh the two guard dogs and one trap uh, I think they actually actually do. They had a link like at the top of the page. Yeah, but to go, if you want to go look at them. Yeah, but I um, didn't click it. Hold on one second. Reveille. That number that reveil. Yeah, that's how you so, say it. New trap, <laughs> new trap is numer is numeralia low. You, <laughs> you good? Reveil. <laughs> Bro, don't be making fun of the French. I'm not making fun of the French. I'm making fun of their language. <laughs> That's making fun of the French. <laughs> well, come on. Who hasn't made fun of the French? Come on. I mean, you also have to remember what they've done to their what they have done to their own aristocracy. Thank you for spaghetti. All right, let's move on. <laughs> that's, that's, oh, that's Italian. That's Italian. Hmm. Crepes. I don't care about crepes. I love crepes. I don't like crepes. Okay, uh, croissant. It's just a poopy biscuit. Okay, the entirety of Cajun cuisine. All right, you got me. Except they didn't invent that. Well, yeah, but it wouldn't exist without without French because they're all because that's where Cajun came from. They still no. speak French. Sort of. Well, it's Cajun French, but it's kind of like speaking. It's kind of like the Mex the Spanish they speak in Mexico. And Spain, I'm aware of the, I'm aware enough. of the linguistic differences. Yeah, 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 I'm just saying that like I don't I'm not gonna give I'm not gonna give that to them. <laughs> it's too good for them apparently. No, it's that it wasn't invented there. It was invented here. That's fair. Also, like French modern interpretations of pizza. That's fair. Also, or a hamburger. Those are American. I'm aware. Hamburg, Germany. I'm aware. So, Modern interpretations. 
Actually, fun fact, during World War II, uh, fried spam. I'm not going to give that to our ancestors because they weren't from here. That's an American thing. During World War II, <laughs> uh, saying that I'm eating a ham, like, d- during an, just after World War II, saying, you did not say you were having a hamburger. It was just a burger. No, it was a freedom sandwich. I don't believe you. Do you- I don't believe you. Because. It's too close to April 1st. I don't believe you. I think you're gaslighting me into believing that freedom sandwiches was a term. And on and the day that I'm in London, you're gonna message me and be like, "Ask somebody for a freedom sandwich, bro." And no, because no. that's because that's April Fool's Day. I think you're gonna spend a month gaslighting me into believing that freedom sandwiches were a thing. I Re- choose not to believe this. Remember the shores of Dover, or the cliffs of Dover. You didn't believe me about that okay, either, wait, did okay, you? Okay. So what's funny is, <laughs> I was so interested by by you telling me that. I'm genuinely considering going to the Cliffs of Dover when I go That's to fair. London. It's anyway, about an hour and 45 minute car ride. Anyway, so also the French fries are not invented by the French. I just have to learn how to drive in Europe. It's the exact opposite of driving the U.S. That's kind of the issue. Yeah. Um. Where was it going? Yeah, but yeah, no, they legitimately call them uh, freedom sandwich freedom sandwiches because burger no is still a German word. He's Googling it. (laughs) He's Googling it. (laughs) A Liberty Sandwich. Liberty Sandwich. Coined during wartime because of antipathy towards the Germans and their language. See Liberty Cabbage? Yeah. What? (laughs) Oh, a substitute for the word sauerkraut. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Related terms. Liberty sausage, liberty steak. But it's yeah. got to be a bratwurst, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And what about a liberty steak? Uh, I don't remember what that one was. Actually, I don't think I've heard it that It doesn't one. even say. Oh, it's it's another one for hamburger. Okay, cool. So That's uh, insane. Yeah. Just the random little tidbit. How do you know that? Dude. The Wikipedia page for this is one sentence. Did you make this? You made this Wikipedia page, didn't you? I, Why are you trying to gaslight me into believing that various Liberty Foods were a thing I, during World War II? I promise I did not. The reason why I know this is because in third grade, I had a substitute teacher who grew up during during uh, who who uh, who grew up during World War II. And she was just spouting off some some stuff from the war times. Super nice lady. That's insane. That's insane that you just had the depth of knowledge to spout something that has one sentence <laughs> on Wikipedia. On Wikipedia. To be fair, it not w- not like a whole not just that it has a page. It's page that's arguably more impressive. Then citing something about the cliffs of Dover. To be fair, that's wow. all, all you need on a, on the Wikipedia page for Liberty Sandwich is the anti the uh, anti German w- way to say hamburger during World War II. I, I will I will say it's efficient, hmm? but you would expect Wikipedia of all places to have paragraphs on there about. <laughs> The history the of history of like renaming stuff. or anti-German sentiment during World War II and why it was a big deal. Yeah, you would think. But no. It's just one sentence. That's insane. <laughs> I genuinely cannot believe that Okay. <laughs> I think it's even funnier that you believe I made the Wikipedia page. You know what? I- I'm gonna go back and see who edited this. Yeah, sure. I, I think it was you. And Suspicious. There's no sources. Suspicious. Okay. And? Wait, Freedom Toast? Freedom Toast. Dude, why are they... Why Why are? Why is the United States like this, bro? Why are we like this? I think all these various freedom and liberty foods is something that you made these Wikipedia pages for just to gaslight me. Bro, if I'm you, pretty convinced. Son, if I did, you don't think I would put in a paragraph of garbage to make it more real? No, I think you would put in six other pages to make it more convincing. 
You've got that are all done similarly to establish the baseline. You've got a point there, but that also just proves that that wasn't me. Because I would have put I would have put more effort into tricking you. No, the effort would be one page. More effort is six. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh boy. Okay. I, I, I'm sure someone who's watching or listening knows more about that than I do. No, I I don't think there is. I don't think anybody. Well, no one knows who's listening. more because I because I because be, I bet if you talk to someone who was like a kid around that time and asked about it, they'd be like, oh. Oh, boy. I'm going to message my dad after this is over and ask him if he's ever heard of a Liberty Sandwich. Fair enough. Okay, you go ahead and read that last card. Okay, sure. Uh, all right, so Numeralia Low. Normal trap. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, special summon a Numeralia monster or a level 10 beast from your hand or deck in defense position. But return it to your hand during the end phase. Okay, that's interesting that it specifies a level 10 beast. I see some, I see some abuse potential there. <clears throat> You, two, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target a face-up monster your opponent controls. <clears throat> it loses 100 attack and defense for each of your cards currently banished face down to the end of the turn. Low is German for lions. No idea why they'd be switching to German. And the name of a chain of sweet stores in Japan. Fun fact. So, mm -hmm. while we're here, let's figure out level what 10 beasts. level 10 beasts there are. There's, I guarantee there's not a lot, and I bet they're all bad. Except right. for like the Numeralia ones. Taking all bets. What, uh, how many do you think there are? Okay. I'm going to say, yeah, I'll let you make your guess first. I'm going to say seven. I will say. Lucky number seven. Nine. There's 11, wow. but technically. Let's, one's a fusion, one's a synchro. Okay, let's go ahead and discount extra deck ones because you can't summon then all there's this nine. card. Therefore, you were correct. Yo, Andro Sphinx Turbo? Sphinx Telia Turbo? Can it be special summoned? Uh, You can special summon this card. You can pay 500 port life points special summon this card while Pyramid is light on the field, blah, blah, blah. It can't be special summoned from their graveyard. Oh. You can play Great Sphinx Turbo. Hilarious. Well, during the end phase, it goes back to your hand, but still, it's funny. So, Thenan, the Great Sphinx, cannot be special summoned except by paying 500 life points while the other two are on your field. And destroy it at the same time. Then you special summon it from your hand or deck? Yeah. Wait, so you can just special summon it from your deck? Yeah, but however, you have to have... Uh, Thena and the Great Sphinx and Sphinx Talia on the field and they both get destroyed at the same time. No, you have to have Andro and yeah, Talia. And, yeah, Andro and Talia and they both get popped at the same time. But how do you activate his effect to summon if he's in the deck? It just activates. You just do it. Yeah. You literally just go, cool, effect of Thena and the Great Sphinx. In my deck? And then like, you tap your deck to signify out of your deck. That's insane. That's like the original Charmers. Yeah. No, I think the Charmers came out first. Um, I don't know about release date, but yeah, yeah, because uh, some of the charmers activate from can activate from deck two, which is insane. No, actually, I think uh, all of the original ones can. No, actually, that's not even it's the not crazy charmer. It's um, possessed. Film you're possessed. Yeah, bro, that's not even the craziest summon that you can do out of the deck. Yeah, you can special summon this card from your hand or deck by sending one face up out of the earth charmer and one face up earth monster control of the graveyard. And special summon by its own effect attacks a defense. But yeah, so like Ausa gets piercing. Yeah. So that's insane. There's one other monster I can think of off the top of my head who who can do that. What? Red Eyes Black Metal Dragon. And Metal Zoa, I think. Now I'm thinking about it. Wait, really? Yeah, I think Red Eyes Black Metal and Metal Zoa can do that too. Red Eyes Black Metal Dragon. Special summon. F must be special summoned from your deck. Yeah, it's in your hand. By attributing red eyes. Okay, so it must be a metal morph effect, huh? Yeah, it's metal morph, but it's not a part of metal morph. It's their effect that's doing it. Dude, why does why is this a thing that exists? Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh is bad enough, dude. That's the last thing I need is monsters that can inherently special summon themselves from the 
deck. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> oh, boy. I wonder if they intentionally made this to be the uh, theme in the Great Sphinx Turbo. No, it's... Well, it's Kwame. <laughs> you never know. Could you imagine if just out of the blue they like made another numerally card that was like, and also summon theme in the Great Sphinx, ignoring its summoning conditions? Bro, bro, maybe they're gearing up for like uh, for like a Sphinx archetype that includes like a retrain of Thenan, of Andro, uh, of Andro Sphinx, Sphinx uh, Talila, and Thenan was like retrains and stuff. That would be insane. All based around pyramid of light still i'm definitely down for it to be honest with you it'd be cool i'd like a nice i'd like a cool sphinx archetypes i like sphinxes they're cool i agree so with that said let's go ahead and do a little bit of a let's talk a little bit about ycs lima peru let's do so ycs lima was of course this past weekend mm -hmm. we had uh, I don't have an exact number of players. Do you have a guesstimation? Not even close. <laughs> of course. Uh, let's see. I, what I can tell you, though, like what I can do, though, is I can go to the round one pairings and tell you exactly how many tables there were. Oh, yeah, and then you just double the number of tables and boom, that's how many players. 600 duelists is what it says. Okay, there you go. Which is, oh God. That's the same number of duelists that they're expecting At for the, the Houston regional. regional. Yeah. yeah. Hilariously. A total of 600 duelists showed up. And they didn't even post pairings online until round three. All right. Okay. So with that said, let's just click on standings after round six. Okay. So I want to say round six is where they cut it after, or round eight is where they cut it after day one. Mm -hmm. And then round 10 is where they cut it to top cut. Okay. So 10 rounds of Swiss total. And then oh. they cut to top 32. Mm -hmm. And we don't have all of the information. For top 32? Correct. We have some of it. But what we do have... Let me just make sure I pull up the page. We have a few of the uh, deck lists. Well, yes, a few of the deck lists, and we know a, a little bit about what was here and what was there and things like that. Yeah, uh, I know. We know. Uh, we the... know all of top eight. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, uh, we I... know top eight, top four, finals. Yeah. Okay. So top eight was two sprite, one salamangrate, one Kashira. One Runic Plunder Patrol, one Fluanderese, one Naturia Runic, and one Labyrinth. Seven different decks, which is not bad. I think that pe most people would say overall that mm -hmm. having se seven different decks nicely represents a fairly diverse finals, which is what most people want to mm -hmm. see. And the top four was Kashira versus Sprite and Sprite versus Salad. Bro, that salad player was something else. Let me tell yeah. you. All the way to top four. With salad of all with things. With salamangrate. To be fair, it was uh, adventure salamangrate. Still. Still. That's impressive. Kudos to you, my guy. Yes. Whoever you are. And top finals was double Sprite. And obviously Sprite won. I never would have guessed. Nobody would have guessed going into the weekend. So... With that said, let's talk a little bit about the top four Salamangrate deck list. Yes, it is quite interesting. It's it's a deck list, all right. So we have two Spinny, one Foxy, one Gazelle, three Jack Jaguar, three Flame Buffalo, three Micro Coder. Okay. And then here's where things get a little bit interesting. The hand trap lineup. Yes. Three Ash, three Valor, three Nibiru. Okay. Two main deck Droll and Lockbird. Huh. What deck does that even hit? Flu. Flu and Kashtira, I would say, are the biggest things that it hits. It also kind of hits Dark World, I guess. Yeah, it can definitely hit Dark World. If you're expecting it. Actually, it, it murders Dark World. Yeah, if you're expecting it. 
and the other deck that it would hit it does mess with branded depending which version of branded that they're playing oh. if they're playing like an agent package which most of them don't these days most of them are yeah. playing like bestials and blazing cartesia and stuff like that but um, if you're playing the agent package and like an allure package then it can hit you pretty hard yeah uh droll prevents searches not draws correct it prevents you adding cards from your deck to your hand period okay yes okay so that's there's a lot of decks that hits now i'm thinking about it yeah mm. yeah it's a good card hmm. yes so and then to round out the monster lineup we have three water enchantress and one wandering griffin rider so yes this player was on the adventure package so next getting into the spells we have one draco back one fateful adventure one right of aramisir interesting that they're only playing one right of aramisir rather than the standard three hmm. I mean, but I guess they were like, eh, I don't I mean, really like want to see my adventure package, I mean, you know? Also, they're already at 42. Yeah, but I mean, if you're going to play something like this, I'll be honest. If I was in this particular player's shoes, you would have gone up to 45. I would have cut the adventure package, played cross out and added in a few more hand traps. Hmm. Fair. I would have put in like. I mean, there's no point in like running Book of Eclipse in this particular deck, I think, because yeah. your your matchup into Kashtira isn't necessarily terrible because of your utilization of link zones and they can't lock link zones. Yeah, that's oh that's that's entirely fair. As long as you have a monster mm -hmm. zone to normal summon into, you got you can just Yes. Go. So next we have Three Salaman Great Circle, two Sign at Mining, one Sanctuary, all pretty standard. One Call by the Grave, which I think is actually really interesting. I think it's actually like a cuttable card in today's day and age. Hey. It doesn't really super hit Labyrinth. It doesn't really super duper hit Kashtira. Hilariously, it can hit Labyrinth I mean, pretty hard. It, yeah, it can hit anything, but yeah. it's not uh, something you're focused on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And your worst hand traps that, that are prevalent in the format are Imperm and Nibiru. Yeah. Which they're also playing three imperm and one Sinet Compact, which is a counter trap. No Salamanger or? No, they're playing Sinet Contact. Con. Con. Oh. Con. I think it's Compact or oh, con how are they? Conflict. Sinet Conflict. How are they searching for it? I do not know. Hey, this. Hey, this. Hey, man, this guy built the deck, made top four. He knows, but he knows better than we do. Yes, for sure. Your extra deck is two Sunlight Wolf. Mm -hmm. two uh, bay lengths so if you see the picture on twitter it says out to almirage that was a mistake oh, when the lengths. person recreated the list to post online it's supposed to be two bay lengths okay fair enough uh which i believe is the other link one it is the other link one yes yeah. one lingery bow for Ibli, i guess in case some idiot tries to Ibli them uh one link spider two splash mage one update jammer one decode talker heat soul one transcode talker, two access code talker, one mirage jalio, and one nightmare phoenix. And then a side deck of one pancratops, two regeki, two dark hole. Ooh. Which is insane to me. Um, th one harpy's feather duster, three twin twister, three d barrier, three anti spell. So, a couple things to note. Like I said, I personally think that. If you're playing this heavy of a hand trap lineup or this yeah, heavy just, of a defense point, lineup, just, just run some cross outs. I would run cross outs. I wouldn't have run the adventure package. That said, I didn't just get top four to YCS. So yeah, yeah. Take, screw me. You know, like, yeah, what yeah, do I know? Take, take what we say on the on this with a grain of salt. On yeah. that particular thing with a grain of salt, because yeah, we are not the professionals. Yeah. But to be fair, if they cut, that's six seven cards that they would cut down and then they add three which means they they're two cards short of a full list yeah so but this this deck is pretty cool because it doesn't play into d barrier which is a problem right oh, now yeah. well, like the only card that really gets affected by d barrier is exactly mirage delio because it's an Ixies monster and it, they don't need it to play. Yeah, they don't need it. It's an I think well, it's like an optional extender that helps them extend through stuff. Yeah, pretty much. It's like an optional extender. That's pretty. Yeah. That's pretty good way to say it. <clears throat> See, Regeki and Darkhold are so interesting to me because Riseheart can just protect itself. 
Or no, no, no. Orion's heart doesn't protect itself. Shanger era. Yeah, Shanger era just protects itself from destruction. Right. So it's interesting to me that they would play Regeki and Dark Hole it, because it really a, is. the reason that a lot of people play Dark Hole is because even if Shanger era protects itself, a lot of times you want to clear the Arise heart and clear the Ibli lock. Yeah. But it, this deck more than any other deck in Yu-Gi-Oh just doesn't care. Doesn't care about the Ibli lock. Like I think the only other deck that would not care are Code Talkers. Pretty much. Actually, Code Talkers able to lock the opponent all the time. Right. And like Labyrinth doesn't care a ton about the Ibli lock just because you have tons of spare extra deck space and you can just run Linger Ebo. Oh, yeah. Like not only can not only can you run, run Link Ebo if it Ling. Or, yeah, that's what I said, Ling. They said Link Karibo. And no, I was I said, like, no, no, bro. Don't, no, don't give people ideas. No, don't no, get, don't get them. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, but like you could like also if it really gets that bad, you could just compulse it. Yeah, you can. You have other ways to get rid of it outside of just link it, link one. So next we're going to get into a top eight Labyrinth deck list. And I do want to hear your particular thoughts about this list. Okay. I'm not, I'm going to skip around a little bit because there's one particular piece of this list that I want to hit last. Fair. So with that said, let's see. We have three Lady Labyrinth, the secret rare from Darkwing mm -hmm. Blast. One lovely lady, which is the ultra late. Is it lovely lady or lovely labyrinth? I think it's lovely labyrinth of the silver castle. Okay, so you have lady labyrinth, which is the secret, and lovely labyrinth, which is the ultra. Yeah, three and one. That's standard. Yeah, really interesting. Three extravagance, three prosperity. That's really wild to me. I They're mean, like, I mean, nah. See, in both pots isn't real. That's not something that's gonna happen to me. I mean. You you can't can't yeah you can extravagance into no, prosperity can't you can't no uh uh I don't think you can uh do they both have to be activated at the beginning of main phase one no because you can extravagance into duality uh I think extravagance prevents you you can't draw any cards by card effects yeah you're not drawing with uh, prosperity and duality. Oh. You're adding, bro. I, bro, I have extravagance, and, and then duality, and then just immediately follow up with duality against. You cannot board. draw cards by card effects the turn you activate this card. You cannot extravagance into prosperity. You're not drawing with prosperity, though, aren't? Though you're adding a the card turn you activate this card. Oh, you there cannot it is. extravagance okay. into okay. prosperity. Okay. That's I the see. issue. That's why it's so confusing to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, yeah, it makes sense for like prosperity into dual prosperity and duality or extravagance and duality because those right but this is like the one combination that they clash yeah i mean i guess it worked i mean to be fair you don't need to activate both of them at the both of them in the same turn you can activate one then save the other one for next turn yeah i guess if you're just if you slow the game state down that much the bigger issue is that you can effectively only activate two of these in a game yes which to be fair with pop extravagance is the same way but then you're yeah but then then you're leaving one dead in the deck this way you're leaving four dead in the deck yeah which is I, interesting. i really don't like that it, again what do i know i didn't get top eight at the ycs yeah, yeah, yeah. but i don't like that particular decision next we have the trap lineup and oh boy there's a bunch of magenta cards here it, it's a trap it's labyrinth it's gonna be a crap ton of yeah. traps so we have first we have one eradicator epidemic virus i think that this is going to be more the standard where you see yeah. one main deck eradicator definitely be, as as if as the labyrinth deck gets more ubiquitous you will see more of these and also as people realize that calling spell against Kashira is effectively ftking them yeah because then they lose access to birth and uh cash to <sighs> theosis yeah cash theosis and the field spells. And the field spells, which just means they don't get to play. Yeah. They can make uh, Shangri-Era. It then, takes the roof off the deck. Yeah, it, it lets... it lets the, it, They can still make Shangri-Era and lock out one or two of your zones. That's about it. Yeah. Two compulsory evacuation device. That feels like... This feels fine as a two of, right? So, yeah, two or three. Either, yeah. either, you know, two or three. Two punishment. Same. Two trap trick. I have issues with Trap Trick, even at one. Continue. Two goes in match. I don't see why not. Three skill drain. Oh, yeah, standard. Three D barrier. Standard. 
two terrors of the overroot standard three big welcome three welcome standard three judgment main main judgment is interesting. yes maining three judgment i think it makes sense so my big so my only big my only a beef, lot of people are maining evenly my only beat my biggest beef with a uh, trap trick specifically is that you after you activate trap trick you only activate you can only activate one more trap mm -hmm. so what you're supposed to do with it is whenever you activate a trap card chain lady to set in one of the different name you set trap trick right then during your turn you flip the trap trick grab a trap you need pass or or even during or you're saying during the end phase well, no, because you can't act. Whatever trap you set off a lady, you can't activate this turn. Then on your turn, oh, I see. You flip trap trick, grab whatever trap you need, pass, and then boom, you're done. I guess the concept is that you can do that multiple times. Fair enough, you can do that twice, and the whole idea is so that way, no matter what, it's so like let's say you activate a punishment, but you need another punishment that gives you the opportunity to go grab that second punishment. Okay. And the other thing that this deck was playing is the old, the old. Uh, Control deck special. Yep, just say it. The Three Red Eyes Fusion, one Dark Magician, one Red Eyes Black Dragon. For Dragoon Package. Yes, so... To be fair... The extra deck's funny, too. To be fair, with Dragoon, that would let you slow the game state down enough to where you could utilize both the pots, both sets of the pot, extravagance and Prosperity, and then by yes. the time... And then by that... You know, then by the time you're run out... You're already so so far ahead. You're about to swing for game. Yes. So this deck is running three dragoon, three entis, three garura. Why three? In case you banish them off of extravagance. Oh, fair enough. Three entis, three garura, three bucephalus. Okay. One omega, one dingirsu, and one Zeus. Standard. Is the Dingirsu standard? For some people, because having Lady and Lovely is a Dingirsu. Yes. But in my opinion, it's better to have Lady and Lovely on field than having a Ding. I think it's more about having a Zeus line just in case. I mean, I guess. But to me, if you get Lady and Lovely on the field at the same time, you've probably controlled the game into submission anyway. I don't see you ever making Ding or Zeus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely a just in case situation, but I don't. Die. Yeah. I think I guess it would make sense if you if your opponent has if your opponent has Shangri Era up, if you have a way to maybe kill maybe hit one of their Xyz monsters, you can out the cashier board with Zeus. But you have to commit so much to get them onto the board at that point. I mean, it's actually not that... Actually, it's not that hard to do. All you need is exactly Big Welcome, and you got it. Yeah, but that's over the course of multiple turns. I mean, talking about on... To break their board turn zero. Uh, All you need to do is that... Like, oh, that's what I'm saying, though. In order to get to that line... Let's say you went first, set five, pass. They well, went yeah. The, if they, you go first and set five and pass, not you're even probably set five. winning. Let's just say all you set is Big Welcome. They do their thing. They don't do anything. You're like, I got to make Zeus to win. All you got to do is flip the welcome and you have Zeus. Well, yeah, of course. Because then you get, uh, well, no, no, you have to do welcome and big welcome. Uh, Because then you get lady and lovely. Uh, Lady gets bounced. Lovely effect. Special summon the, la the other one. We'll make ding swing into Shang. You don't even have to make ding. You don't have to make ding. Swing into Shangira with uh, lovely because lady will be in defense mode. Main two, make ding, yeah. Zeus on top, attached yeah. to. Exactly. And Shangri Era is going to protect itself. Side deck makes a lot of sense. Three Ash, a Gamma package, three Lord of the Heavenly Prison, three Sphere Mode, two Nib. Hmm. I would have done two Lord, three Nib personally, just just because I would rather see have have access to that third nib just in case. It's crazy to me that they're playing thirty six trap cards and then their side deck is nothing but monsters. Yeah, they're all hand traps. That's crazy. Except Lord. Lord isn't technically not a hand trap. It's not a hand trap. Yeah. Ross Fear Mode is also not a hand trap. That's fair. That's fair. It's a board breaker. Yeah. It. It's crazy that there's no lava golems mm -hmm. in here. They have a uh, sphere mode. Yeah, it's crazy that they're running Sphere Mode over Lava Golem. I think Lava Golem's a better card. 
in this particular format. Well, the thing because Castiera players are very frequently going for a non-committal board. Well, yeah, but like the issue is that like if I think it's a case of that if you're late into a tournament, a lot of cash players are going to start putting out three monsters, and then you just go cool sphere mode. I guess because they're going to because they're going to at that point they're going to get you're going to get to the players who know what they're kind knew know more about what they're doing with the deck, but also aren't in that mindset of I have to play around specifically raw sphere mode. Yeah, and so then they'll make Shang Era, and then they'll make um, Diablos of the Mind Hacker. Right, and then they'll s normal summon uh, Rise Heart, make a Rise Heart on top of it. Yeah, that these are all things that could happen. And then pass, you can just go cool sphere mode. Yeah, I guess that's fair. I guess it does make sense because of the using Diablosis to try to lock all the zones. But you are correct that Lava Golem is the safer pick because then if they decide to play around raw sphere mode and you just Lava Golem them, right? they literally cannot play around Lava Golem. They can play around the sphere mode. They cannot play around Lava Golem. So, uh, I will also touch on an Eldritch stun list. Which is interesting. Yeah, because it was a South American YCS, so there's always an Eldritch deck. Hilarious. Also, this guy is the drippiest man in the world. You should see his glasses. They are insane. But, with that said, let's talk about the deck list. Uh, three Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Standard. Three Pot of Prosperity. One Cursed Eldland, three Eldlich the Golden Lord, three Haquero. Oh, he, he did those so fast. Yeah, it looked like Haquero. Three Haquero, three Conquistador, and three... Uh, Emperm? Haquero, Conquistador, and... Uh, kind of looks like Emperm. Scarlet Sanguine. Oh, Scarlet Sanguine. Never mind. Yeah. So three... Three Scarlet, three Hakuero, three Conquistador, three Eldritch, one Curse Eldland is the whole Eldritch package. From there, we are running three evenly matched, which is a crazy Spanish name. Fair. It's we're getting this decklist off of video. Yeah. Three Solemn Judgment. This I'm literally had the video at max speed. Three Torrential Tribute, and I'm just like trying to yeah. relay it at max speed. Because it, there wasn't a picture list. Uh, three, there can be only one. Three goes in. Three rivalry. Three skill train. Oh. Just three of all the floodgates. Oh, no. Not like this. Bro. Oh, he zoomed in for the shot of all of the skill, all of the floodgates. Ugh. Ugh. Gross. Pee pee poo poo. And I think that the extra deck is one Lingery Bow, one, uh, one Baylanx, three uh, uh, Gustav Max, one Vampire Sucker, one Lina, one Imduck, one Link Spider, one Juggernaut Lieb, uh, the Constellar package for the Hakuera and Sanguine. Uh, a, a link that I don't recognize at all. Enter Blothnir and the BLS Link 4 because he's ultimate rare and very nice. Oh, did... Seems to be the reason. Oh, just because it's an ulti? Yes. Your side deck is three Lord of the Heavenly Prison, three Imperial Iron Wall, which is good, broken. Good card. Especially in the Kestier matchup. The card's Wait, crazy. Doesn't that card shut off the Eldritch Engine too? Yes, but I think that you can play way more than Kestier can. That's fair. Uh, to be fair, all I, at that point, all I got to do is put uh, Golden Lord and you win. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Three D Barrier. And also, you can always just send it to the graveyard to summon Golden Lord. Oh, yeah. You can turn off whenever you want. Three yeah. Gamma Seal, which is... I feel like Lava Golem is just the perfect one. But I think that there is also an argument to Gamma Seal because if you play a Kaiju, sometimes the... the Sometimes the the cash players are going for a really unassuming board of just a Rise Heart pass. Mm, and that lets you out that board as well. Right. Literally just to avoid Lava Golem and Sphere Mode. Yeah. Which is why I said some are going with just Shangri-Era or Rise Heart and only yeah. locking like 
four or five zones. Yeah. So something to think about. And your last side deck card is three copies of Ghost Sister Spooky Dogwood. Probably mm. for time, if I had to guess. Oh, it's definitely a card for time. Yes. The cowboy of the of the side deck. Yes. So next we have a top 32 Dragon Link list. Ooh, Caleb, Dragon you Link. might have to help me on this one. Sure. Because this list is this is four and a half minutes long and it's at two X speed. Three Safer, one Collapse Serpent, one Wyver Burster, one Cash Dragon Levianir, three Rocket Tracer. No, two, two Tracer, one Recharger, one Absent Router. One Noctovision, two Bestial Lubellion, three Magnumut, one, two Sauronir. Oh, wait. Three Sauronir, one Drusworm. That's what it was. Okay. Okay. So it was two Tracer. What was this one? Recharger. Recharger. And then one Absent Router, one Noctovision. Two and then the bestials. So, yeah. three, two Lubellion, three Magnemut, three Sauronir, one Druisworm, mm -hmm. and that was the monster lineup. I think. Wow, that was fast. Nope. And then we have Nibiru's and Ashes. That make that makes sense. Place it of each. Yep. Three Chaos Space, three Quick Launch, one Dragon Ravine, one Boot Sector Launch, mm -hmm. three Book of Eclipse. Book of Eclipse. And I don't recognize that card. I don't recognize that card either. Uh, Re Recobrado Serralado? Cer Let me Google this. I, yeah, I've never heard of this card. Well, I mean, it's in Spanish, so of course I've never heard of it. But yeah, I mean, we Google it in Spanish. It'll, it should bring up the card. Recobrado. Recobra Do. Sena. S-E-N-A. Lado. Yeah, that's the card. Branded Regained. Oh, okay. Branded Regained is the card. Okay, okay. I'm glad we got there, because, yeah. wow. All right, and then your trap lineup is... Uh, oh, branded... It, another branded... A branded trap card, and then three imperm. imperms. So, is that branded sword? Bestia? Yeah. Is that sword? Yeah, it's sword. Okay. okay Ooh, so, we got there. We recognize the card. Wait, I'm just going to do that. ED. Oh, so we have uh, Borload Savage, Baron de Fleur. We have sh one Striker Dragon, one Pisty, one Romulus, Romulus Dark. Dark the Dark Charmer, ID. or Mascarena, two Spheres, one Opelousa, one. Oh. Sorry, Yusha? No, that, that's, that's a Link 5? Yeah, it's Borland. That's a Link 5. Borland. Yeah, okay. Borland. Access Code Talker, Triburst Dragon, Unicorn and Phoenix. Yeah, tri yeah, Triple Burst Dragon, Unicorn and Phoenix. Yeah. Yes. And then Triple the... Burst is a cool card. I prefer Delindris personally. Yeah, I think they both have their uses. Mm -hmm. Your side deck is three Lancia, three Radian, the interdimensional kaiju. Why Radian specifically? It's dark. It's dark. That's exactly why. Yeah. Three evenly, three day barrier, and three cosmic cyclone. So hilariously, before I was considering lava golem, I was considering radiant and because it's a fiend. Because it's a fiend, and yeah. welcome labyrinth fiend locks you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. But then I was like, wait, lava golem's a fiend because I thought he was pyro for the longest time. Right. Okay. Well, that was uh, insightful, but. That was a lot of information very quickly. Yeah, bro, that salad player, though. I think it's crazy. And, uh... <coughs> Bless you. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me. Also, now, can we say that Power of the Elements was one of the greatest sets of all time at this point? Probably. Because, at this point, Sprite has won a YCS. Mm-hmm. As well as Tier Limit. Tier Limit was Tier Zero. Mm-hmm. And it was also Sprite was also part of the tier limit when it the early tier limit lists that were winning. Yeah, yeah. And bro, like anytime I see a level two now, I immediately think, how was Sprite going to abuse this? Yeah, for sure. I think that that might be one of the best sets of all time. I mean, I, we all already knew that it was, but yeah, like now I think it's like I think it's like top five all time set releases. Yeah, like this is just more evident. This is just more nails in the already completely sealed coffin. Correct. Yeah, this is like taking a nail gun and like shooting it into the open grave just to make sure. 
I guess, sure. Yeah. It's extra nails. Anyway, so with that said, thank you all so much for listening to today's episode. Like I said, please be sure to check out this Saturday, March 18th at 10 a.m. I will be hosting with House of Champs, the Houston Regional. And if you're there at the Houston Regional, be sure to come and find me or Caleb. We will be posting the link to the stream on Twitch, not Twitch, Twitter, to, on Twitter, on and, the Twitcha. Yes on Twitter and in our Discord server. So if you're not in our Discord server, please be sure to check that out. If you're on our YouTube, be sure to go ahead and subscribe. And if you're on iTunes or Spotify, you can go ahead and subscribe there. Leave us a review or a comment or whatever, wherever you are. Let us know what you think of the podcast. So also be sure to check out all of our sponsors. With all that said, let's go ahead and thank all of our wonderful patrons. Woo, cool people. Yes, so a huge thank you to, oh my goodness, I had the page pulled up, but I went to a different page and now I have to pull it up again. Oh no. Yeah, a huge thank you to April Floodgate, Lunar Light, Furry Fusion, Cam Yang, Dragon Maid, Sun Seed, Kane Martin, Zyphorus, Blackwing, Silverwind, The Ascendant is the best Floodgate, Earth Machine, best deck, Epi, has anyone actually read Toy Vendor, HH Cyber, I am McLincoln, If All You Have is a Cosmic, Every Problem Looks Like a Floodgate, Monstertron, Mountain Man, Oatmeal Spaghetti, Owen Alvarado, Trap Tricks, One Cash Tier is Zero, Unbanned Number 95, Konami, Understanding and Reading are two different things, Virtually Savior's World, Where Flame Swordsman Support, Konami, Rogue, and Tier 2 are the polite terms for Bad Deck, Aaron Gardner, Asami, Ashless Chaps, Atsuyo, Simp the Silver Castle, Box Wine, Cyber Dark Duelist, Duty Booty, Dragon Maidenless Behavior, Hero's Pebble Zero, I'm about to read a glamour tribute for Crossy's Plant Nuts in Your Mouth, Cam, the Hockey Walkie Slush Mixer, Old Man Red, Pin Code 143, Santa Claus, and Valence Hojo Mama. Thank you all so much for your continued support. If you want to have your name read out on the podcast, be sure to check out our Patreon down below. With that said, thank you all so much for listening and have a great week, everybody. Take care, everyone.